celebrate Sri Aurobindo's 150th anniversary, we have a series of events at the Aurobindo Art Gallery, and we are very fortunate to have Professor Sunit Varma to give us a beautiful talk connecting art, music with Sri Aurobindo's vision. I welcome you profusely, and uh, uh, the ball is on your court. Big welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Rajendra. Mother and Sri Aurobindo came into my life uh, about 20 years back. I had two extraordinary dreams where I was shown that this is my path. And in the Indian tradition, they say that there is no point in searching for a guru. When you are ready, the guru will come to you. Sure enough, they came to you. About love, in any love relationship, even in human terms, man, woman, or any other kind of uh, partnership, one person has to make the first move. So in the relationship between the human and the wife, who makes the first move? Obviously the divine because we don't know. And the divine comes and tells us, I'm there. So you get for a while things like Ananda, peace, compassion, oneness. So they give you a taste of that. Then it is up to you. You have to do your sadhana. In, uh, in Uttar Pradesh, as I belong to Uttar Pradesh, Papad Bhaiyane hai, that is Sadhana. So, I was receptive and I have been doing that. And I don't claim that I have arrived. But some attainments are there because more and more of Ananda and uh, Prem Bhav and Karuna Bhav is, is centered into my life. And the most recent, the Ananda and Prema happened many years back. But about three months back, Karuna Bhav opened up. When I hear anybody's pain, tears start from pouring out of my eyes. Mothers. Place. Now, in my sadhana, it's not reading, it's not even she heard in those writings, mother's talks, which I have not read much. It is mostly music which has helped me to grow. And uh, the meaning of guru is that which dispels darkness. So music has been my biggest guru so far. So music uh, basically is impacts us impacts us at the level of emotions. And uh, as a student of psychology and a professor of psychology, we have many theories in our books, which are all Western. I don't teach any of those things anymore. We have a theory of emotion uh, given in by uh, Bharatya in the Bharatya man, uh, in the Natya Shastra, second century. For the uh, it's called the Natya Shastra, and uh, in the Natya Shastra, which is almost six thousand pages long, A4 size, there are two chapters on emotions and sentiments. So in in that, Bharat Muni explains that there are eight uh, emotions. Uh, I am going to refer so that I uh, do it uh, correctly, academically. A prelude to what I am going to say. There is a theory point. Let us, let us 
have the rasa through using. Uh, Bharata created a handbook on how to train actors. Natya in India meant at that time a immersion through three mediums theater, dance, and music. So they are interfused. And so he said that when the actor is there on the stage and we are, the audience is there, the rasikas, what is going on? How, what are the emotions? What's happening? Let's try to analyze it. So there is a depiction, Bharata wrote about this, a Ramayana depiction. Still today it is happening in North India every year. Dashera. So he says that uh, Ram Chandraji is there. Sita has been abducted by Ramana. Ram Chandraji is sitting on his haunches and he is weeping. Sita is one. So he says that there is an actor on the stage and there are people sitting in the Rasika. Whose emotion are we experiencing? Because the actor is not Ram. The audience, no Ram. Loss of Sita, many people don't have wives, many people are women, but everybody is weeping. What is happening? Where is that emotion coming from? That is the realm of pure emotion, rasa. And that is what art gives us. It uplifts us from our personal story. Because our emotional life is guided by a story of oh this happened to me, that happened to me, this person wronged me, that person wronged me. And uh, therefore, uh, I am not uh, going to forgive him or her. The world has been bad to me. So I have an identity of possibly, an oh, identity of victim. So everything I interpret in terms of my victimization. So, Somebody cares for me? No. What's his motive? What's her motive? So I am caught in that narrow spectrum of emotions. What art does, it loosens the grip of the ego and that personal narrative, that story that we are attached to. And momentarily, when we are immersed in art, maybe painting, dance, sculpture, music, we transcend the ego and that limited identity, ego related. And then we move into the realm of pure emotion, which is called rasa. You can then enjoy everything, you can relish every emotion. You can take an ananda in every emotion. May it be anger or whatever, I'll come to that. So in the Tattri Upanishad, it says, from delight, all these beings are born. By delight, they exist and grow. To delight, they return. Sri Aurobindo says, uh, give me a few seconds, bear with me. For the universal soul, all things, and all contacts of things carry in them an essence of delight best described by the Sanskrit aesthetic term rasa which means at once sap or essence of a thing and its taste. Rasa means to taste, to savour or to sample, but when the term is used to refer to the grand meta emotion of aesthetic experience, it is usually translated as aesthetic pleasure, enjoyment, rapture. 
she got in good. Now going back to Bharata, the rasa it is a pleasure which lasts only so long as the dramatic illusion that makes a rasa possibility is painted. Because it is possible, uh, because it is possible for members of the audience who witness a drama, Natya, the Rasiki, to experience enjoyment or pleasure, a rasa, even from the apprehension of negative emotional states like disgust, fear, anger, sorrow, which in other circumstances one might want to avoid or repress. It is reasoned by Abhinav Gupta, who was, uh, who, see our Shastras were revised. They are eternally open to revision. They are not fixed in time. People don't know what Shastras are. Sri Aurobindo told me what Shastras are. Which in other, so all these negative emotions, we want to avoid or repress. So, Abhinava Gupta, Bharat, 2nd century AD, Abhinava Gupta, 5th century AD. It is reasoned by Abhinava Gupta that, and others that rasa must be an autonomous meta emotion, transcendental, a sui generis form of consciousness. Transcendental consciousness. I am going to the next slide. Now, the eight emotions that Bharat Muni, as he is called, talks about eight major emotions. And in modern psychology, they also have that. So, as in, in terms of rasa, that transcendental reality, the highest is love, Shingara. Then there is the comic Hasya. Then there is the pathos, Karuna. Then there is the furious, Rodra. And then there is the shuroik, Veera. And then there is the horror, Ravana. Bhayanaka. And there is the odious Dibatsa, disgust. And then there is also the marvelous Adhubhuta, astonishment. In everyday, when it comes to our emotions, Shingara, we mix it up with Rati, eroticism, sexuality. But that's not what it's all about. It's, that's universal force, all of creation. Hasya, mirth, laughter, jokes, pathos, karuna, sorrow, pain, crying, rotra, anger, growth, heroic, utsa. Horror, bhai, odious, disgust. Kya ghatiya cheez hai, what a disgusting thing. Marvelous inner feeling, astonishment, vismaya. Wow, astonishing my eyes. This is not me talking, this is mother and shiva. Then Bharat also said, that these were the major emotions, is it? But uh, he was not an ignorant, ignorant person, and so he said that there are many other minor emotional states where he mentioned in 33 minor emotional states, like uh, which are transient, momentary, they come and go. Repose or withdrawal, Nirveda. Debility or weakness, Galani. Doubt or apprehensiveness, Shanka. Jealousy, 
Asuya. Infat infatuation moha. Contentment, dhriti, shame, vrita. So there are a list of 33. Now we come to the more concluding part of the theory. Emotions are the experiences of particular individuals like you and me result, resulting from particular causes or life circumstances. Shorn of, separated from that, shorn of all connections with particular persons. The emotion expressed in art is detached from the context of time and place and thus is truly generalized. Abhinama Gupta, 5th century, is very specific and clear about the importance of the ability of works of art to separate emotions from the common loci, loci means context, frame of reference, namely the egos of particular persons at a particular time and place. You have to go at 10.55. I have to catch a flight. Leading to particular consequences, experiential or behavior. When tied to a specific context, the lure or threat of external factors leads to either pleasure or pain, satisfaction or dissatisfaction of the ego. Pride away, separate, pride away from that context. The feelings involved in the aesthetic experience are neither directly pleasurable, pressure, pleasurable nor threatening. And yet they strike a deep chord in the psyche of the aesthete. Rasika. Rasiki. They are enjoyable without being either pleasurable or painful, such that even fear and disgust are relished. In the words of contemporary author Suresh Dhaikode, 1981, Rasa is nothing. I have to scroll down. Rasa is nothing but an experience of the basic psychological proclivities, fitra tendencies, in our nature, in an ennobled and heightened form without any selfish, practical and carnal preoccupations. We attain to, the, to something of the capacity for variable but universal delight in the aesthetic reception of things as represented by art and poetry or drama or music so that we enjoy there the rasa or the taste of the sorrowful the terrible, even the horrible or repellent and the reason is because we are detached, disinterested, not thinking of, of ourselves or of self. The defense, uh, the term that is used for that is Jagupsa, but only of the thing and its essence. Probably for this reason, many scholars have linked the theory of rasa to the path of devotion or self-transformation. In a sense, it could be said that the experience of rasa in aesthetic experience is the first step or the beginning towards the path of devotion. Because all rasas in them because all rasas have in them inherent, inherent a surrender of the ego, though not conscious. You are doing it, you are looking at painting, wow. Which puts one in touch with Ananda for one, for some time. The, sans, the Sanskrit expression used to describe the relationship between joy of the art experience and the supreme bliss of Brahman is 
ब्रह्मानंद सहोदरा विच लिटरली मीन्स बॉन्ड फ्रॉम द सेम हूम दिस एक्सप्रेशन रिकग्नाइज सिमिलैरिटी बट नॉट आइडेंटिटी बिटवीन द एक्सपीरियंस ऑफ आर्ट एंड द प्लेस ऑफ ब्रह्म एंड ललित भाई शी ऑलविंदो एक्सप्लेन्स दैट ऑल इमोशंस विद विच वी कन्फ्रंट द एक्शन ऑफ द यूनिवर्सल एक्जिस्टेंस अपॉन अस are really directed towards him in ignorance at first but it is by regarding them in growing knowledge towards him that we enter into more intimate relations relations with him and all that is false and ignorant ignorant in them will fall away as we draw nearer towards unity to all to all he to all of them he answers taking us in the state of progress in which we are for if we met no kind of response or help to our imperfect approach the more perfect relationship could never be established the last two point she or him even as men approach him the divine so he accept them and responds to by the divine love to their bhakti tathayav bhajate whatever form of being whatever qualities they lend to him through that form and those qualities he helps them to develop encourages or governs their advance and their straight way or their crooked ways them towards him now the last shri hari bindu explains that our relationship with the world must more and more be directed consciously towards the divine the one being capital one being who stands behind all forms in the universe and must progressively shed their more earthly and ignorant elements until they become changed into a pure and perfect theory over she or uh, kabir das ji the uh, couplet doha mera mujh mein kuch nahi hai mera the nothing in me which is mine mera mujh mein kuch nahi hai mera mujh mein kuch nahi hai jo kuch hai so tera tera tujhko sauf diya क्या ला देंगे इज नथिंग इन मी विच इज माइंड एवरीथिंग इज यू आई हैंड ओवर दैट चार्ज टेक चार्ज ऑफ माई लाइफ डज इन पास मी थिंग समवेयर एल्स कभी दाजी से जो मैं था ई वो जो मैं था तब हरी नहीं वेन आई वॉज द डिवाइन वॉज नॉट जो मैं था तब हरी नहीं अब हरी है हरी है अब हरी है मैं नहीं दैट इज वट स्पिरिचुअलिटी गिव्स अस एंड ट्वेंटी इयर्स ऑफ साधना हैव ब्रॉड मी टू दिस प्लेस आई डोंट क्लेम टू बी ज्ञानी इन वर्क्स ऑफ इन द वर्ड्स ऑफ आलोक पांडे जी हम तो पैर के बीच के नीचे की धूल ही है श्री अरविंद और वहां पर दैट्स ए थ्योरी नाउ वी विल गो टू सम म्यूजिक शिफ्ट माई फोकस द सेकेंड पार्ट इज हाउ टू एप्रिशिएट द म्यूजिक हाउ टू एप्रिशिएट म्यूजिक स्टॉप थिंकिंग Stop analyzing. What do you analyze? Just let it hit you. Get blown away. Just get blown away. How can I do it? Connect, yeah. Don't let the mind come in. Unless it's a higher mind of operating, over mind, then intuitive mind, then super mind. Uh, the person who's singing, his name is Tochi Raina. 
Tochi Raina is a Punjabi. Uh, he sings in Bollywood, who earned his bread and butter. But he's a Sufi by heart. So there is a piece by him called Jubini. So he has one, on one side he is singing in Bollywood alone, solo singer, but he has a Sufi band. It's called Sufi Akushta, Acoustics Akushta. So we hear Tochi Rana as a Sufi. In this uh, rendering, it begins with a few lines by the mystic poet Baba Farid from Punjab. Then continues with Baba Bulesham. Okay. So in the first part, I'm translating because I have all the translations, but to make it simple. So what he says is, Vekh Farida. Dekho, Farida is saying, look, look, people, Mitti Ruthi, it's the dirt which arises. Mitti Dhuli, it's the Mitti which is getting washed away. Mitti Hase, it's Mitti which is laughing. Main bhi Mitti, Tu bhi Mitti, Chaar Din Ka Mela, I am also dirt, you are also dirt, the matter which will decompose. Char din ka mela, four days of a carnival, it's a mitti mitti. Back, back to that. Bek farida, bek farida. Jat bhi mitti, caste religion. Path bhi mitti, caste religion is. Jat sirf khuda bhi unchi. It's only the divine who was said. And Baki is a mitti mitti. Then he comes to Baba Ulesha. Ye Jugni Kandiya, the Agni of the Rig Veda, the soul of the psyche. The Jugni Kandiya, and the Jugni is what operates everywhere in our eyes. It's the Jugni set, soul spirit. And uh, he explains that later I can pass on the his translation. I have a word file. Because with my students I share all this, so I have to show them. Then he says that Baba Bulesha koi puchya. Somebody asked Baba Bulesha to see the Garibi rich in such poverty. Shukriya ka, Khuda ka shukriya da kaise karte ho? How do you how do you grateful the divine in such poverty? So he prayed it. So he did Baba Bulesha replied that मैंने देखा कि लोगों को हीरे का मूल्य नहीं मालूम थी। People don't know the value of diamonds. मैंने खोटे सिक्के चलते देखे। मैंने देखा I've seen people walking on water. People say that the dal, the lentils, don't don't become soft enough to eat. Dal na gandi. Maine to patthar malte dekhi. I have seen the rocks made. I have seen people who had nobody in the world. Aise puttar bhi dekhe. Guru because of the grace. To maine wo rab. सब कुछ देंदा, the God has given me everything, क्यों ना शुकर बना?
that is rasa is a emotion of jealousy and anger and through art we enjoy it if our wife or girlfriend or partner was with somebody else last night it's only vibration the voice is used as an instrument such a advanced civilization existed 8000 years back right. anyhow that is our heritage and our message to the world is that we are one let us try and operate from that level hum sab mahi i mean everybody sab hum mahi namaste <laughs>